Hi guys, my name is Emily. Welcome back to my channel. If you can't tell, I am still very sick, at least in terms of like the physical manifestation of this, but I don't feel sick in terms of energy. I think both of my eyes are infected right now, which is cool, hence the lack of makeup. So you get to enjoy this in its raw, organic form. <coughs> Today we are going to be filming my May TBR. It's sort of like a book scavenger hunt, so I've asked you guys on Instagram for books that, so the prompt is find a book that, and you guys have given me a couple of suggestions, more than a couple of suggestions, You've given me a lot of suggestions. <clears throat> so Gabby challenges me to find a book that has been on my shelves the longest. Gabby also suggests find a book that deals with mothers. Hashtag Mother's Day. I'm sure the microphone is picking up the heavy machinery. So I'm just gonna continue. J.D. Estrada. Challenges me to find a book that you've been avoiding and tackle that some bitch. A book that I have been avoiding. I know exactly what one. Miss Bookiverse challenges me to find a book that has my name in it. I can't find an Emily. Patrick challenges me to find a book that was written prior to the 20th century. Published in 1818. That is prior to the 20th century, correct? So Bookish Bluettes suggests a couple um, is a sequel. And then Peterson suggests has to do with time travel. So for that, I'm finally going to read The Man Who Folded Himself. My sister has been trying to get me to read this for years. There you go, Kirsty. <coughs> Sklestef challenges me to find a book that deals with witchcraft or wizardry in some way. Derlinioli, butchering your name, I'm sorry, challenges me to find a book that was written by an Asian author. I mean, the obvious one is staring me right in the face, but I also want to make this manageable. Taught herself English as a foreign language as a junior high school in Midori City, uh, currently resides in Tokyo. Miss Herman Unit 1 challenges me to find a book with deckled edges. I am going to uh, combine that with the John Steinbeck book just because it's huge. Also, the stack is getting huge. Deckled Edge Dame challenges me to find a book that features a strong sibling relationship. Amanda Center challenges me to find a book that I'm skeptical of. Skeptical of liking. I'm skeptical of doing a good job. Oh, I know. There we go. We're going to go through the stack and I'm going to share with you what books I picked for each challenge. For On My Shelf the Longest, I have the poetry collection Leaves of Grass by Walt Whitman. So this has been on my shelf since high school. When I read one of John Green's books, I can't remember which book overlaps with Leaves of Grass. Then I have a book that deals with mothers and that is Dumplin by Julie Murphy. So this is about a plus-size girl whose mother is a beauty pageant winner and is heavily involved in the pageants now and so we're looking at a mother-daughter relationship. Then I have a book that meets three categories and that is a classic, has deckled edges, and is a book that I've been avoiding and that is East of Eden by John Steinbeck. I believe this is more of a contemporary classic but it's probably one of those classics of American literature. I picked this up after reading Of Mice and Men and Loving Of Mice and Men and I was like I want to read more by John Steinbeck. Steinbeck and so I picked this up 
and just the size of it. This is one of those books that when uh, JD uh, challenged me to find a book that could kill a small rodent, this also would work because in addition to being like large, it's also pretty weighty um, and so it's intimidating. I was challenged to find a book that was written prior to the 20th century and so for that I have uh, Frankenstein by Mary Shelley which was published in 1818 I believe which is the 19th century so not super far back but technically counts. I was challenged to read a sequel and so for that I have A Gathering of Shadows by V.E. Schwab. I was also challenged to find a book that I can't wait to read and that is Lyriel by Garth Nix. I was challenged to pick up a book that deals with time travel and for that I have The Man Who Folded Himself by David Gerald. I was challenged to find a book that deals with witchcraft and for that I have The Witches by Roald Dahl. I have read this before or rather I've had it read to me, I believe in grade six my teacher read it out loud to us. Um, so I'm familiar with the story but I haven't read it myself ever. I was challenged to find a book by an Asian author and so for that I'm reading The Night Parade by Catherine Tengueri. I was challenged to find a book with a strong sibling relationship. Now I'm not sure about the strength of this sibling relationship. I mean I haven't read this before so it's we Have Always Lived in the Castle by Shirley Jackson and looking at the back, living in the Blackwood family home with only her sister Constance and her uncle Julian for company, Maricat just wants to preserve their delicate way of life. So there's that isolation so I feel like she has to have uh, a strong relationship with her sister. Although her sister was acquitted for murdering the rest of the family. I feel like somebody who wants to preserve that family life is somebody who wants to foster a strong relationship with their sister even if she is a murderer. Um, so I'm excited for this. And then the last book I have here is a book that I'm skeptical of and that is For Goodness Sex uh, by Al Vera Chio. So this is a parenting book that deals with changing the way we talk to teens about sexuality, values, and health. And I'm honestly a little bit skeptical of any parenting book that has a dad joke as a title. Um, I'm curious to see what this does in terms of giving advice to parents about how to talk to their teens about sex. I am not a parent but I am interested in the media that is produced for teens. If I could go back to school one of the potential like PhD dissertations would be looking at sex in YA, sex in um, young adult media and so I'm interested in what advice is being given to parents. So that is my May TBR. So something that I just wanted to quickly mention before uh, I move on and wrap up the video. So what happens to the books that I don't read? Because you're probably looking at this stack. This is a bonkers stack. How do you expect to read this all in a month? And the idea is not that I fully expect to be able to read all of these books. I mean, it would be cool if I could. Um, it's to have a... because this, this whole TBR, two shelves, is a little bit overwhelming. So to narrow it down to things I find helpful to get excited about these books, to read their synopses, to have little challenges I find personally helpful. So at the end of the month, like, it, you'll see in my April wrap-up that I didn't read all of the books on my TBR. I think there were, like, five that I ended up putting back, and that's what I'm doing. I am, if I'm, like, if I have started it and I'm not interested in it, I'm making the decision to donate it or to sell it. So it's also a way to cull this TBR if it's something that has been here a really long time and I have absolutely no interest in. Life is too short to read things that you hate. And if it's something that I'm still really interested in, I still think that will bring me joy, will enrich my life, I put it back on the shelves and I'll read it when I read it. Yeah, I know this looks like I'm just, <laughs> it's specifically this book that is making me feel like I have to justify 
this stack because it's huge and I've been putting it off for so long. Before we go, we have to thank my patrons. Thank you patrons for supporting me. I really appreciate the work that you enable me to do. Thank you for making videos like this and other long form projects possible. If you're interested in becoming a patron, links to that will be in the description box down below. Thank you guys for watching. Let me know your thoughts on the stack that I have here. If you have read any of these or think I should prioritize any of them, I just wanna get excited about the books that I own and read the things that I own. Also, I know that I am behind on my comments from Veda. I will be setting aside a day when my brain is not so foggy to respond to them all in one go. I will try and let you know what day that is, maybe on Instagram, so that you can know that I've responded to your things and maybe look for the response if you're interested. I'm trying to be responsible, but also take care of my body, which is like, dying because I didn't take care of it. Ooh, also, I think I have successfully opened up my videos for viewer-generated uh, closed captions. Obviously, throughout the month of April, I did not have time to closed caption the videos. I still am trying to prioritize accessible videos, closed captioning videos, but the body of videos that are behind me now is overwhelming. So if you have some free time and you feel like closed captioning a video, that would be much appreciated. That support is awesome. I will of course be working on closed captioning <coughs> my videos as well. Uh, thank you for watching and I will see you soon, hopefully significantly better. Fingers crossed. Bye.